Yakima Valley Community College Radiologic Sciences Program presents Radiographic Positioning Scapula Hello again. This demonstration will be of the scapula. A lot of the information we're going to talk about today uh, we've discussed in other lessons. Uh, a scapula is very, very similar, the, the lateral projection, very, very similar to the scapular Y. So you won't have a lot of new stuff to learn today. But do not confuse the scapular Y with a plain scapula. Scapular Y was that orthogonal view to help the doctor determine displacement of a shoulder or a humeral exam. A scapula is, is the shoulder blade, uh, perhaps, well, um, a common thing that we see is when a patient gets thrown from a horse and the horse rears, patient's on the ground and the horse comes down and the hoof hits the scapular blade. That's not a the shoulder humeral type injury. It is actually of the scapular blade. So that's our focus today. And we're going to do two projections. We're going to do an AP in the lateral of the scapula. So do not confuse the two. Keep a scapular Y separate from a scapula exam. Scapula exam is two uh, positions, AP projection and a lateral position. We're going to do a right arm again because it's easier for the camera to see. I have 40 inches SID. Uh, I'm using the vertical bucky again. It tends to be easier on the patient. If you were to do this recumbent or on the stretcher, table, stretcher, either one, the centering reference lines will be the same. So we have a 10 by 12 because of the shape of the scapula. It's a V shape. And I'm putting the ID to the bottom because of that triangular shape. The scapula is wider at the top and comes down to the narrow point at the inferior angle. Again, 10 by 12, lengthwise vertical board. Okay. We taught you how to locate the coracoid process in a, in a previous lesson. We're going to be right on the coracoid process with the film's edge two inches above. So I'm going to tentatively set this up because I need to adjust the patient a little bit here. And the position that you're going to do is have the patient bring their arm out to the side with the humerus at a 90 degrees. Now, in the hospital setting, you're going to have an IV pole and have the patient hold that IV pole. It is very difficult for the patient to hold their arm up for any length of time. So I'm going to let her, you know, this is the IV pole, but we're going to let her relax now because it really isn't and I need to talk to you for a minute. Why might you ask me, why do we bring the arm out to the side, the humerus at a 90 degree? Well, it does several things. When the patient's in a natural position, the scapula is at somewhat of an angle to the board. And bringing the humerus out to the side actually brings that angled scapula back. So it reduces the OID, and you will now be more perpendicular to it. And when the arm is pulled out, the scapula is pulled this way, away from the vertebral body. Because right now, it's right underneath the ribs. And the ribs tend to make it hard to see. This one will be hard to see no matter what you do. But when the arm comes out laterally to that 90 degrees, it does three things. Again, the three things that it does. Reduces OID, makes the scapular blade more parallel to the film. Therefore, you are shooting more perpendicular. And it pulls it away from the not entirely, but it pulls it away from the, the rib cage. Okay. But that is uncomfortable for the patient to hold. So while I talked, I let the patient relax. Okay. We'll move fairly quickly now, and then we'll let her rest her arm down. Humerus at a 90 degrees, suggest an IV pull. You can feel, uh, feel on yourself now, your very peak of the shoulder, you will not feel any bone. But work your way backwards a little bit. Don't do it to a patient. I'm letting you do it on yourself so you get a reference point. It's pretty soft up here. But just posterior, you're going to feel a bony ridge. That's the very top part of the scapula. And then I can actually palpate for the inferior angle. 
and I found the inferior angle on my patient. She is in a gown with no underwear on. There's the inferior angle. There's the superior border, and I want to center that. Can you bring your arm in front of you just a little bit? That's great. See, I'm, trying to, I'm finding the top and the bottom border and the crosshair of the film. Can the camera see? There was her inferior angle. There's the top. Can you see how this crosshair is not to the center? So I need to raise that. Inferior angle, superior border, and I'm going to center that. And just step away from me just a little bit. Okay. And then the arm is at a 90. And I'm going to find the coracoid process, the V. And can you, there you go, very good. Baby step, she came off that way a little bit. And collimation is 10 by 12. But the size of the patient See, I'm getting rid of her sweatshirt here. I have too much collimation over here. I want to tighten that field up. So I'm going to 12, 12 inches length and come in side to side, just where it's skimming the body. And I make sure that the medial border will be on there. And then I put a right marker on, right up here. Will work. Okay, get the lead out of your, the shadow. Arms out of 90, and you can make the patient uh, hold their breath, don't move, and you make your exposure. I am going to let her relax before I recap here for you. Film is 10 by 12 lengthwise, ID to the bottom because of the shape of the scapular blade. Three reasons you pull the arm out to the side. Reduces OID, makes the scapula more parallel, and it pulls the scapula laterally more away from the rib cage. Some of it will still be underneath the ribs, but at least its lateral borders will be clear to the rib cage. That's why you do the arm at a 90. Film's edge is two inches above the shoulder, or when you can palpate, it's best to palpate for the borders and just center that scapular blade, as I, I demonstrated here to you. Collimation, leave your length. Have it 12 inches, but come in side to side. Collimate side to side, I'll probably show an inch to two inches on either side, depending on patient size. Use the right marker, patient holds their breath, and you make the exposure. And the, um, you think of anything else? Do we cover it? Yes, okay. Our lateral projection, you exchange films. Still the 10 by 12 lengthwise, ID to the bottom. This is the one that's very similar to the scapular Y. Your job is to superimpose the medial and the lateral borders of the scapular blade. The difference is the humerus is not coming down the center of the film. The humerus, and I'm only going to show you in the AP position, you can do these AP or you can do them PA. Um, we're going to do them AP for demonstration purposes, easier for the camera to see. But the arm will come up and over the body. The higher the arm, the more the scapular blade you get down here. If you're, if you're concerned with the injury being superior, you would not have the arm come across so much, so high. Most of the time it basically comes across the chest. The patient is going to be approximately 30 degrees from the vertical board, obliquity. Think of it as a shallow oblique and they get obliqued until the two borders. And if you'll recall, this is the axillary border and the medial border until those borders are superimposed. Okay, and the scapular blade is perpendicular. Again, same scapula position, but the humerus is coming across the chest. And then this crosshair here should come right down the the, the bone, so I'm going to have her baby step away from me, and then you can use your vertical board to see how much tissue is over the center of that wall bucky. You can palpate for the superior border, the inferior border, and see how this crosshair is coming almost exactly right down the center. We need just a slight shift higher, And you can see that the film's edge is two inches above her shoulder. 
but I'm precise because I found the two borders and centered them exactly. Our marker is just inside the collimated field, and notice that there's not too much light. This would be too wide. It's too much. Your field is too big. You need to collimate down more, a little closer to the body, particularly if you're using the automatic exposure control. Okay? And then you have your patient hold their breath, you rotor and zap. If you choose to do this, remember the negative is that you have OID. What can you do about OID? You increase SID and then you use the density maintenance formula to fix the amount of mass that you're using. If you do it PA with the patient reverse, and we'll just kind of mock it here, we're not going to do a close-up, the patient would turn around, the affected arm would be coming across the chest again, and the body will not be shallow, it will be steep, and you superimpose the two borders just like we did with the scapula Y, scapula coming right down the center. Um, the advantage is there's no OID, and I think with the scapular Y demonstration, I think this will make sense to you. Okay, how will these images look on an X-ray? Well, you take two for a scapula, 10 by 12 lengthwise, ID to the bottom. The AP will demonstrate the scapula pulled away from the rib cage. The lateral border will be pulled away from the rib cage, clear of that, clear of the thoracic cavity there. And the lateral will show the two borders superimposed with density coming between the scapula and the rib cage. Uh, a really good lateral will, the scapular blade will be probably no wider than a pencil. And that concludes the scapula demonstration.